Kayla Martinez. I'm Courtney Hart. And I'm Taylor Mitchell. And our topic we chose is river flooding. We chose to analyze the Ohio River flooding of 1937. Despite this river flooding taking place a long time ago, um, flooding of the Ohio River is something that happens quite often. Uh, specifically, we chose to focus on Cincinnati throughout this presentation because it was hit the hardest. Now, to put everything in perspective of how bad this flood was, and how often this occurs is Cincinnati not only was hit with the flooding in 1937, but was recently hit with flooding this past winter. Now, today we'll be talking about what caused flooding, the damages caused by this flooding, uh, how to reduce future damages, and how to prevent future flooding in this area so catastrophic. To start, I'll be talking about the cause of flooding. Grover and Mansfield report states, um, report called Floods of Ohio Mississippi River January through February report of 1937 states that this flood wasn't caused by one huge uh, storm event. It actually started back in December 1936 and was led, led by a bunch of little storms into one huge storm. Because there was a bunch of little storms, the soil was already saturated and the Ohio River was already flooded to its max. So when one huge storm came along, it caused extreme flooding throughout the whole Ohio Basin. Now, the Ohio Basin was hit the hardest with the flooding, but because the Ohio Basin was flooded to its max, it flowed down into the Mississippi Basin, causing more flooding along the Mississippi. Despite that, the Ohio River Basin was hit the hardest. Uh, Grover and Mansfield report that the heaviest storm was marked from January 20th through the 25th. Um, in the lower Ohio Valley region. Because it was in the lower Ohio Valley region, as the flooding progressed, like as it moved along the river, it hit Cincinnati, causing a huge flooding in Cincinnati. Um, according to Man uh, Grover and Manfield, they said that on January 26, the computed volume of water in the Ohio River Basin was 56 million acres feet, which is roughly 5.1 inches over the Ohio River Basin. So if you don't know what that means, it was really like a lot of flooding catastrophically. But like I said, Cincinnati was hit even worse than the whole Ohio River Basin. Um, in Fuller's article, UC's commitment to community was significant during the Great Flood of 37. Fuller states that the flood level in Cincinnati alone was at 57 feet, where the river crested at a nearly 80 feet on January 26, 1937. Um, if for those of you who are a visual person like me, in this picture you can see that right here is where the Ohio River is, and all of this lighter blue area is where the flood went in downtown Cincinnati. So this was an extremely uh, catastrophic event. Fuller quotes um, the UC geology professor, Bannard, on his statement, on average, if you looked at several hundred years of records, this would be greater than a 100-year flood event. That is, it had a less than 1% chance of happening. If you remember back to class, flood levels, flood events are measured in years. 100 years being at the top of the pyramid with only one chance of happening. If this was greater than 1% chance, this event was truly ca catastrophic for 1937 in Cincinnati. Okay, so now that we talked about the causes of the flood, I want to talk more about um, the damages that were left from the flood. So Dawn Fuller, who was a, who, she wrote an article um, on the University of Cincinnati's website, um, stated that um, the Ohio River flood was, a, like geographically speaking, was bigger than Hurricane Katrina. So this whole um, gray area here on the map is um, where all the, it was all affected by the flood, and that is essentially larger than Hurricane Katrina. So um, Ohio History Connection states that the whole area that was affected by the flood um, was about $20 million in damage. And um, due to the flood, um, communities throughout Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois were um, extremely affected by the flood. And the reason why these communities were so affected by the flood is because the Ohio River um, flows from about here to here, um, showing that um, those communities were right on the river. And uh, the rest of the states, the reason why those were affected is because of the dispersed of the flood. Um, 
So all of these um, states were affected by the flood, but there was one city in particular that was um, affected greatly by the flood, and this was um, Cincinnati, Ohio, which is actually relatively close to us. So Cincinnati was hit the hardest, and according to Ohio History Connection, it flooded for about 19 days straight in that particular city. Um, Fuller explained that the flood level in Cincinnati alone went up to 52 feet and it crested at 80 feet. Um, due to this, um, the extreme flood levels, there were many extreme catastrophes in the city alone, and that included fires and explosions, power outages, and even, ironically, a shortage of clean water. Um, this left behind massive destruction in the city, and for example, like even houses were submerged in, completely submerged in water um, due to the extreme flood levels. And um, due to that, it left about 50,000 people homeless. So I wanted to use this picture because I wanted to show how, um, like, how bad the flood actually was. So people had to move around on boat and you can see how high the level is on the um, building, so that creates a, a lot of um, damages. And it's also like coming up on the um, wire lines, so that also creates a lot of damage. Um, it is said that the leading cause of the uh, Cincinnati flooding was due to the Ohio drainage basin. Um, the over excessive rainfall in that area had caused the discharge flow rate to increase, as well as causing the tributaries to increase as well. The tributaries is five water flows from the smaller rivers to the larger rivers. Therefore, as the tributaries began to increase, the water level also increased. Um, now I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to prevent those uh, damages that Taylor was talking about. Um, it is said that due to the Ohio River flooding, multiple areas surrounding were affected by those damages left behind. New research studies show that those damages could have been avoided by just a few modifications made to the um, flooding like beforehand. According to Katie Grant, um, the course of action that should have been taken to help with these modifications is a new construction of homes and buildings. The Lawrence Waterhouse has recommended some changes that could have been made to these buildings, such as the concrete flooring, so taking away any wooden flooring or the carpeting that could be soaked in water. Um, leading to molding or anything like that. And then also modifying the walls, so MDF and any plasterboard within the walls um, to be more robust alternative. And then following those recommendations, a man named Mr. Roke had suggested an overall waterproofing makeover of all the homes and build, uh, buildings, such as removing, I mean, moving the electrical sockets and the wiring to a higher level within the walls to um, secure and increase resilience. And then now I'm going to be showing the different ways to prevent the flooding. According to Katie Grant, a line of defense from the flooding area to the buildings could help with the impact. Um, shown in this picture, uh, it has different kinds of stages within the boundaries of the river and then the buildings. And so with all those different stages, it could help with the impact of the water, depending how catastrophic it is. Um, for example, the first area is known for like, the absorption, the wetlands. Um, with the protection of the wetlands, it helps with the area of the soaking up all the overflow because of the soil and plants needing to reduce the water. And then another method of defense is the levees. Levees are a boat up the sediment alongside the rivers that helps with the overflow of the water. Although if those levees become too small for the rise of waters, they don't prevent much. Therefore, with man-made levees that could be built way higher than the expected water level capability, it decreases the chance of overflow. Um, so in conclusion, our group discussed that um, the Ohio River flood of 1937 could have been avoided or not nearly as bad as it was by taking steps to prevent the damages, um, such as modifying the buildings or um, adding man-made levees. Um, this could have prevented major catastrophes and helped people um, avoid losing their homes. By, or overall, the flood would have been much less disastrous. And these are our